All right, so it seems like they have started, so maybe it could be Jaina Passo. Apparently, it's gonna be Fortress. Now it's the home map for the Germans. Yeah, well, Germans kind of like to be playing Fortress quite a bit. That's especially like NC is quite skilled on that, so I'm thinking it's gonna be a bit of a common theme from like NC Zone and all kinds of things like that. So let's probably also turn off the music and head on and in with the second game between Denmark and Germany too. As Denmark are right about now leading 1-0 in the match after quite a solid performance on Arabia in about 26 minutes. So let's see what this time around are we gonna be seeing from the players. So we're gonna be having what kind of civilizations all around. We're already looking at in here the Berbers for Denmark. So Salad escape with them. He's gonna be joined with good luck playing the Britons again. So this is one of the more powerful civilizations. So if you don't have Mayans, then certainly there is an option as Mayans are banned. Next player is gonna be Street Pitnu with the Khmer, quite a powerful fortress civilization. And the last player for Denmark is Dobbs, playing with the Slavs, and that's yeah, excellent civilization for arena type maps. So definitely at home on Fortress. You can see here the balls, there shouldn't be any kind of stealing going on. They are right now going to be having in the base. So they can be right now all in the base. There can be one here, a second there. So maybe this is already kind of the fixed map. Because there was a bit of a discussion about it. Previously, a few days ago. So I'm thinking this might be actually already the fixed one. Seems like all the balls are actually inside. So there was a pause and unpause for a moment. Let's see one more there. Second there though. Okay, so maybe not. Maybe they just basically got lucky the players in there. So maybe it isn't finished yet that fixed map or something along those lines because players will be liking to be having the balls always in. It seems from what I have read in there as the first few glitches already coming forward from Rende. You can see he's definitely not waiting for anything too much. <laughs> and he's gonna be trying to jump into the next age as humanly quickly as possible. But is he gonna be like trying to do something special? <laughs> I mean like with the Cumans. It can be kind of working out because he can be of course trying to get the second DC as soon as possible. This is actually a fairly viable strategy. Or a fairly interesting strategy. Just kind of have to be right now thinking about if the villages are gonna be good enough as far as the numbers. In being able to get enough houses up. And also to be able to supply enough food for production from two DCs on the villages. I'm thinking so. It doesn't seem like such a bad idea. So very interesting beginning at this point with this very early fuel age in there. But let's follow through with the gods or rather with the gods with the civilizations for Germany too. So we know that Randy is playing as the humans. He's gonna be joined by Gurke with the Vietnamese as the of course compulsory archer civilization in there. Rage Boy playing with the Indians and the last place is gonna be Somos with the Mongols. Yeah, Mongols are quite a solid civilization for Fortress because of this you have a lot more time. Hmm. Okay. Oh, he's gonna be dropping a TC here in the middle. <laughs> I was just kind of looking where is he going for a hunt. But nope, he was just not entirely clicking into any kind of other resource. So <laughs> that's still all right. And I was kind of in the middle of a thought in there. I already forgot it, unfortunately. But yeah, well, maybe we're gonna be thinking about it a bit later. What it could have been that I was thinking about there. Ah, the Mongols. Right. Well, the Mongols, that's a pretty good civilization here for Fortress because you do have a lot more time to develop. And Mongols, they have a bit of an interesting early game. The Castle Age is the weak one. And then, basically, a bit later in the Imperial Age, they become really powerful. But if you are gonna be having all the time in the world to basically jump across the Castle Age very comfortably without getting harassed there or anything along those lines, then you're usually having quite a better game. And therefore, you tend to be quite a bit more of a threat altogether in the game. Which obviously is definitely having a bit of a chance of happening here. Otherwise, the flanks and everything along those lines, that's gonna be good luck to the top against Gurke. So good luck with the Britons, obviously, and Gurke facing him with the Vietnamese. So that's a proper country units with the Ratana Arches in here. But at the same time, Log Bowmen with their huge range are always a bit of a nuisance and issue. So it doesn't have to be working all at 100%. It really depends just on the flanks there. So right now the Cumans here is going to be trying to supply the horses as soon as possible. And for the opposing side it's going to be the Khmer. So elephants, that's going to be a hard combo. Really hard combo at this point. With <laughs> elephants from the Khmer together with the Longbowmen. We have seen that yesterday. Yesterday? Yesterday. 
I think it was the first match yesterday that we were streaming. Or maybe... Well, I don't know, doesn't matter. In the past two days, as it kind of <laughs> is starting to be getting a bit confused day into the day. And hey, Andre, welcome to the stream. Yeah, it's quite possible that Denmark is going to be within 3-0. The first Arabia was already 26 minute affair. Quite a quick one and definitely convincing one. But here, obviously, Fortress can be quite often a bit trickier. As if you basically at this level, even if the players are gonna be having like low rating and anything along those lines, if they cannot be harassed in the early game, which is usually the time when the high skilled players are gonna be getting an edge, then in the later game, with proper economy, which kind of like at this level, pretty much anybody can be booming properly, then kind of like anything can happen. And I'm thinking that Fortress really is kind of a bit of a viable option in here. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm gonna be trying to stream the match tomorrow. You are having it at 16 GMT, right? The match, Slas versus Germany. So I'm definitely looking forward to streaming that tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow we should be having two matches. That's gonna be the one that right now we are talking about. And another match should be at 13 GMT. Also Denmark, but they're gonna be playing Oceania. So it's a kind of Australia and New Zealand and stuff like that. I'm hoping to be available for that as well, so two matches tomorrow, at least so far as they are, as they are scheduled. And otherwise for today, we're gonna be having this one and a bit later today at 19.30 GMT, there's going to be Sweden versus France, another quite a high profile matchup that I will be also liking to stream, so looking forward to that. And therefore if you're gonna be interested, then just feel free to follow here on the channel and you're gonna be notified when I'm gonna be coming live there. As in between, I'm gonna be taking a bit of a pause after this match. Obviously for dinner and all kinds of stuff like that. I'm definitely planning to be having some more. Each of them passed to goodness from Euro Rumble 2020. Hosted by Pan Carlino and Dasso and the Italian community. So obviously in the early stages here we're just gonna be having a bit of a fun with running around. Some horse races. With basically nothing else. But potentially the Cumin obviously here could be having a bit of an edge as he does have the faster horses, so he could be able to really catch up with the enemy fairly quickly and fairly easily. You can see there's gonna be a basically just two scouts trying to chase down one of the enemy from good luck. Now, so looking at the village accounts, we are at Somos at 25, 25, pretty much the standard in there. Only Randy is at 45, being obviously the Cuman. And it's a really fairly interesting strategy that he advanced into the village, basically like almost, he clicked almost at the very beginning, like at two minutes. So we advanced about 4 minutes or how much was it. Very interesting strategy indeed in there. And obviously it's gonna be allowing him to be having quite a powerful economy. And he, he's still gonna be in right about now feudal age. But right now with the castle is cooking in, he's still gonna be having more villages than his opponents. And obviously for a bit longer, so therefore... Another advantage of the human right now having the second TC in the feudal age is that he is not idle during the advance. That's a significant part because obviously the advance is costing quite a few villages because of the length of that upgrade. But I think you can be still comfortable yeah, right. making villages from the second DC. So it's basically as if it never happened. And that's gonna be another edge for him altogether. Well, let's see. Once he's gonna be reaching Castle Age, it's gonna be exactly kind of like the time to compare the amount of release and kind of the advantage that he managed to get through all of it. And see straight I'm just gonna scouting around and trying to have a look what is going on all across the map. Quite a good vision already. I'm basically gonna be held by the fact that he does have obviously right about now cartography. As it gets upgraded automatically once you get the market. And the uh, expansions. But well, otherwise, since we are already in the castle ages, we should be seeing a few villages or other few villages, damn it. A few archers trying to move around for the archer civilizations, maybe for the Britons a bit. The long woman already somewhere. Hmm, so far not. There's gonna be the volume already in the way. So not any kind of easy access, for example, to the gold mine or somewhere to the back of the enemy bases. Uh, so nonetheless, it's gonna be also interesting to see the proper trade routes in here, as they're gonna be both risky. Maybe it's kinda like all risky. Rage boy, Gurke, or actually not. 
I was thinking it's a bit turned around, it actually isn't. But there's gonna be a bit of a risk and problem with all the walls you threw back. They will definitely have to be denied and deleted. And I'm thinking even the towers. Because there's gonna be trade route in here, kinda uncontested though, otherwise, and uninterrupted. Uh, here's a problem with the choke point. There is a blockage though, complete. So like straight from here maybe, coming through the middle of the... Oh, that's not entirely all that ideal. They might have to do some kind of landscaping if they want to be fully efficient. As I can see some kind of problems with that, at least ever so slightly. <laughs> can see the palisade. Maybe, maybe before he thought to build it with the houses using the stone, he had a different idea. Like to maybe go there or who knows. <laughs> But he decided to be doing it in the end a bit differently. Now some kind of camel arches are moving forward from the Berber. So far not any kind of breach uh, going on. Uh, Salad is capable on the left side trying to fight against Samos with Rage Boys. So far it doesn't seem like it's Samos would be all that ready. Considering that he's playing the Mongols, he's obviously gonna be taking quite a long time. But they don't have any kind of easy access anywhere anymore. You can see there's a blockage complete one. But maybe he could be wanting to go. Also for another like there. So he's not gonna be giving all that much of an option to the opponent. You can see there's gonna be a bit more forwardish walling going on. And by yellow. E. <laughs> that patron in village or whatnot. I haven't exactly seen villages on patrol before. It's a bit strange one. Not one more. Bit strange one indeed, but nonetheless, that's gonna be right now already good luck. Coming forward with the arches, as we have said. So I need to be clearing my throat here a bit. Yeah, sometimes when I'm going into the streaming right after I go for the run, as was exactly the case today. And yeah, well, it can be a bit of a challenge, especially in the current climate, when we <laughs> need to be wearing the protection of the face and everything along those lines. He's making for a bit of a different and a bit more complicated experience as well, as he's trying to actually quick wall himself out of the problem here. Doesn't seem to be working all that well. So the villager is gonna be dying for a street beat noob for the time being. And this is looking like a TC. Yeah, I was just gonna think if maybe it was a castle. Because considering, considering the fact that he is uh, the longbowman maker, therefore Britain, there might be a bit of opportunity for that already. Now he's gathering tons of stone and obviously gonna be aiming for more and more castles somewhere. But nonetheless, that's gonna be a bit of opportunity on the gold miners here. Now let's have a look into a point of view of blue. Hmm, he's gonna be able to get at least one, but at least he's gonna be also denying more of them here. That's also fairly important, as otherwise the number of villages right now already at 81. Somos has been able to catch up rather well with Rage Boy and also Dops. So you can see the advantage in the early economy. From the Cuman, no, he gathered more resources, obviously, in there. Question is if it was all that worthwhile, because right about now he is a bit back. Now, supposed to all the players, he's still obviously leading on the score a bit, not really by much, but he's definitely getting caught up with quite quickly. But at the same time, it also is going to be for the reason that he's advancing to Imperial Age fairly quickly, the quickest of them all. So definitely, can be expecting horses from him uh, immediately. So scout to the left, just a bit of scouting once basically the trade is gonna be going, so they're gonna be well aware when the situation is gonna be also requiring them to be at least there. With the thought, and see at one guard for the camel yeah. archer, or maybe he's just basically looking after this guy, making sure that he works. <laughs> now there's gonna be a bit of a flaring potentially for walling. Nor military buildings, not really sure. What right about now? Green is flying about. And four. Well, it's gonna be obviously just some kind of team communication in there. As uh, they're gonna be on team speak or other team speak, it's a bit old school. But considering the Germans, maybe so. As uh, they could be having a team speak from NC Zone, they don't have to be necessarily on Discord. But so far, we don't really see all that much of an activity, especially from, from the Germans. They seem to be so far playing a bit, bit passively. Waiting for the opponents, obviously, the Vietnamese to the right side, getting another castle for a few more. Rattan Arches. He's actually here yeah, hiding quite a lot of them already inside. And I'm kind of thinking he's maybe trying to find where exactly the kings are. I don't exactly see him and see them right now for the orange. 
Okay, there's gonna be... Ah, that's the Orange King. Incumens base. And he's gonna be there together with his own king. All the way to the left. We are looking at... Obviously, still a bit of a nuisance with the archers as they get them higher and higher range. Already at 8, but still probably missing the omen at this point. So they're not entirely in that full capacity. They're also not elite yet. As they're gonna be the two kings for the remaining German players. For Somos and for each boy here. <coughs> so in the end, it was actually wow. fire for and he's gonna be placing and where he's gonna be placing all the military buildings, dops. So you can see at the Slavs, obviously, that's gonna be just Siege and Halbert years. Uh, for the Berbers, it's gonna be the Camel Arches, apparently. That's what he's gonna be choosing. And maybe even some normal Camels, we're gonna be seeing a bit later. But considering the Halbert years, they're gonna be coming from the Slav. It doesn't have to be really that much of a case, even though you can see right about now. Rage Boy is gonna be clicking exactly the Camels in as the Indian. That's obviously quite understandable. As all the way to the right flank, there's gonna be all the army coming forward from Gurke. With the Rattan Archers and also a few Trebuchets at least on top of that. I know the castle right now dropped for good, good luck to defend oh, even more stone for more castles. But he doesn't exactly have the traps. That's a bit of a problem for the British. Because obviously they need to be having the castles for the for all of those longbowmen. So therefore they might be having a bit of a hard time uh, basically putting in at least a few Trebuchets. And of course villagers desperately trying to keep this alive. As you'll be liking to drop another castle, but well, you're gonna have to wait for that. At least plenty of elephants are already present in here. You can see that in the middle, that's gonna be a or the Gurke from EC clan trying to basically My drop castle. another canal. Half defensive castle, but also give him a bit of an option to potentially switch to the bottom side to help there against maybe some kind of camel archers. As in the middle, we are gonna be looking at the first engagement. As of this right now, the elephants they already do have quite nice upgrades plus four into the pierce resistance. Plus four also into the attack, and while the castle is still standing, it's gonna be under quite a bit of a threat. And the horses, they so far don't seem to be powerful enough to deal with the problem. Uh, he's gonna be getting blast furnace, and otherwise they are reasonably well upgraded. It's gonna be of course the plus four into the attack in that. And Paladin still gonna be taking a bit before they are coming in. He doesn't have any kind of gold. He's completely out of gold. That's a huge issue for him. But it seems that it's not gonna be all that much of a matter in. Because the Rattan Archers that are there in quite high numbers, they do have at least the 9 attack, which is also not bad. And while they are not elite, as it seems like they exactly come in, so in about like a minute or two they're gonna be also elite. This is working really well for right about now the Germans. And exactly as we said at the beginning, while the Denmark should be definitely quite a solid edge or the having an edge and be the favorites, it doesn't have to be necessarily all that definitely simple. As it seems like there's gonna be a bit of a counter push with the elephants finally paying off with their numbers and well the cavalry is not being exactly entirely strong enough yep the trebuchet hidden behind the castle is probably gonna be able to get even some good hits there and oh well look at the elephants absolutely not doing anything just standing there holy damn not great not cool game <laughs> hopefully they weren't on any kind of stand ground i don't think they would be as they usually do not really use that so that was really strange and quite unfortunate because the Trebuchet could have been killed a bit earlier. But this basic aggressive cast right now being dropped by good luck. I was trying to look away into the other side of the battlefield, but this is quite an important play here. Because if it happens, they're gonna be instantly getting quite a lot of ground in between them. And it's gonna be, well, a whole lot more of a problem right now for the Germany, even though it was looking quite excellent just a moment ago. You can see at 11, already 10 range. Uh, still not at least long moments, but all the way to the left, it seems like a rage boy, together with his teammate Somos, are having quite a bit of a chance to push forward, with the Mangurais being already elite and almost fully upgraded, just missing the last defense upgrade, and it seems to be exactly on the way. And as for the other team, or the other team, uh, gonna be also in the Imperial Camel Raiders, also not fully upgraded yet, missing the attack upgrades in there, but right now, as this castle is gonna be just about now falling through the ground for the yellow players, so therefore a huge problem for Salad escaped with the Berberis, who was hoping to be producing the Camel Archers a whole lot more. Well, Halberd here set in, Siege Workshops are also getting dropped, and so far we don't exactly see all that many, for example, uh, on edges that could be helpful against the against the Bangurai. So it seems like that the combination of the army is going to be really powerful enough for the Germans, so the Mongols will probably be having quite a bit of an important game rate right now. You can see the Camel Archers missing the defensive upgrades in there quite heavily, and he's trying to get Fortified walls, ballistics, even gills is he getting. Potentially hoping to be 
Maybe even sling in. That's kind of interesting for him. Now they may be thinking that he doesn't have any kind of strong enough units. That would be a bit strange because they obviously need any kind of population limit they could be getting. For well, this situation that he's in, as all the way to the right flank, there are gonna be just a few more siege workshops potentially help in the case. Things are going kind of badly, but it doesn't seem to be exactly the case as the right flank is going a whole lot better for Denmark. Let's see, even though Drata and Archers are having quite a solid defense against the Longbowmen, they are still forced into defensive, but especially the Elephants are one of the more important units in here. But then again, you can see how much of a problem they're having. They are absolutely not doing anything there, they're just standing still. Look at that! Absolutely nothing going on with them. That's so damn weird and so damn bad because they are dying without doing anything at all. Are they like getting stunned? Or whatever like that. <laughs> I don't know. But what is definitely right now the case is that right now Gurke is gonna be completely leveling the walls as he's trying to basically move forward because that complete disaster with the elephants is going no, I don't want to say that it will basically just st stem in the tide at this point, but it will be definitely helpful if they didn't just stand there without anything at all. And welcome to the stream DJ Coolmaster, as we are in the second game of the match between Denmark and Germany too, but damn, this just suddenly turned in the other direction, as I was going to say, and as I was saying that the Britons, with right now the Khmer, therefore Denmark are in such an edge, it's exactly the opposite now, especially with the Paladins, making an entrance into the battlefield fully upgraded, with the Elise also having right now full upgrades, the 21 attack, so the game is still not lost, but we don't see any kind of presence from uh, from right about now, blue, and he definitely needs to be getting not only archers, but also halberdiers to at least slightly help with the horses, because if, he, if they can be getting rid of the paladins a bit faster, then that is certainly quite a solid way how to gain victory here, because right now they are certainly struggling, castles falling, and of course it can be resulting into even the long moment being a whole lot rarer on the battlefield, so this is not looking all that awesome here, as the command is gonna be trying to rob up the scorpions, that's something that usually we see against tons of archers because they tend to be kind of clumping up but we need to be also looking onto the left flank where apparently Dobbs is gonna be maybe able to handle it for the time being together with Salad Escape even though Salad Escape has been really receiving quite a lot of a beat in here you can see that maybe some onagers actually help with at least a few of the Mangurais in there as the economic good luck at 99 otherwise everybody else be it some proper 120 plus even 140 160 you can see it's street, street beat noob needs it for the elephants randy also for the paladins so they're having good echo but yeah well not looking all that solid all around at this point all the way onto the right flank whereas here on the left flank you can see it even a bit of a trash units in there coming from the boy with the hussars but that's kind of normal to be actually supplying it once you're gonna be running a bit low on the food or on the gold sorry as the trade needs to be starting to get going and yet already working exactly towards that doesn't seem like that there will be any kind of disruption uh, from the opponent so far as the trade for the opposing team for the danish is also getting started you can see it all the way to the bottom there are also especially red dots already moving and around as well this castle is gonna be taking a bit more time and effort to actually finish as the combination of the Mangura is getting higher and num numbers and on top of that the Hussars obviously supplying just literally only the numbers that's kind of what they are really powerful in that the camels they are a nice unit but otherwise if you can be just supplying it to population limit with other guys it's really helpful we are looking at a bit of a very interesting hill here for the longbowman as they're trying to basically snipe all the bombard cannons as obviously they do have some kind of area of effect so potentially against the contact archers it could be something rather viable and we see another right now switch forward right now for the Denmark and the reason for that also partly could be because we see hussars here but here for the paladin maker it's kind of like replacing the numbers slightly and therefore the army is not as powerful as otherwise Randy would be wanting to have so the Rattan archers they obviously do have what they do in what they can fighting against all the elites but they could be wanting to get maybe ever, at least ever so slightly against their units that they should be countering the archery nose here from the Brit. Now see, yeah, exactly as expected, Scorpions are coming forward and considering the clumpage of all the enemy units, they're gonna be rather effective if they're gonna be getting especially heavy as 9 range against 8 range. Obviously they have a bit of an edge in there. How's he looking with right about now? Red, 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 red. He's gonna be so far not getting heavy. I don't exactly see the upgrade in there coming forward. Uh, do actually Khmer even have heavy scorpions on the right now? 100% positive. 
it's a bit of a rare unit, you don't see exactly every single game. It's very bad at movement in them with the speed or with the zoom as uh, this battle is probably gonna be still hanging in the balance then for a bit but once the it is gonna be properly solid i'm expecting that the paladins are gonna be yet again in high numbers and therefore they're gonna be able to push slightly back because i really think there needs to be a switch into halberd years you can see he's already working on that slow little bit definitely liking that so far not making anything new but is he no he's right now going for only some trade caravans not the trade cards if I'm not even getting all that many upgrades for the infantry, he's slowly getting ready for it, but I, I think he already should have been making it. Because obviously he, it's kind of cheap trash unit, so therefore also fairly effective. And as far as kind of keeping up the population limit up, as at this point good luck is only at 150 population limit. Doesn't even have all the houses, but that's gonna be because of the lost castles. And obviously he was having population limit through that. But since he lost a few, he's in a bit of a problem with that department but nonetheless you can see the villagers moving forward trying to drop a castle into the middle of the enemy base yes salad escape is not in any kind of good spot with dobs and right now with all the upgrades that can potentially ha have and master on the imperial camel raiders and especially the mangurais obviously are the powerhouse here it is looking really kind of bad on the left side for denmark and really really damn good for germany too so welcome at the dream of 3-0, maybe seems to be getting quite significant cracks here. No, it kind of already got quite a few minutes ago. And welcome to the Steam Pasakli. We are having some more Age of Empires 2 today. And gonna be having a bit later and tomorrow. Because there are still plenty of interesting matches in the tournament going on. But otherwise, there's gonna be Age of Mythology tournament next week. Over Saturday, there's gonna be one day Smurf tournament. So I'm gonna be streaming that for sure. So that's gonna be Age of Mythology day. In here, but here, yep, Salad Escape also hemorrhaging right now economy, being down to only 92 villages with 11 idle. And Gurke, he's having also quite a few idle villages, interestingly, in that 25. What is exactly the reason for that? I'm not entirely all that positive. It's quite a massive battle in here that we are having. Quite a massive battle indeed. As you can see, there's some siege workshop units in there, are helpful, but the castles for it everywhere. That's a complete disaster for Salad Escape because he was just fully built for making the camel arches and they are just not really working all that well and he's not prepared for anything too much else. He's not gonna be able to produce anything else, he's right now gonna be getting out of the castle at least. As in the middle there's just some kind of random blue villages all the way to the top. Return arches and... No, oh, actually even some kind of siege units just moving forward. But yep, you can see that even the right side has been finally broken through. Quite convincingly, it's gonna be resulting into resigns. Now, Solid Escape is already giving it a go. His, his allies are gonna be probably following through fairly quickly as well. Exactly as we kinda said, on the right flank, it was going a bit better for the Briton together with the Khmer, as long as there weren't all that many Paladins and there were quite a decent amount of Hussars. But it seems to me that at this point, they have been Ready. able to even help themselves with a few siege weapons from the Mongol, that also kind of help, I'm thinking, because you can see the siege rams obviously are going to be soaking up a lot of damage from the Archerinos. And with the castles getting killed for the Brit, he couldn't transfer enough and quickly enough into the Halberd, yes, you can see he was still down only onto pikemen. And therefore they didn't have all that much of like an answer there to what the army that they were facing. And the Ratanaches in the end proved really, really good, as even, for example, the Scorpions weren't able to get rid of them properly in that. So very well played by the Germans. They're gonna be taking their own home map. Congratulations on that, based on the Arabia. Maybe that wasn't entirely 100% expected, but good performance and well deserved victory on well chosen home map. So you're gonna be heading into home map for Denmark. I'm guessing it's gonna be something a bit opening. Could be easily Ghost Lake, as it would be obviously favoring them based on the Arabia performance in there. But it could also be something like Eldorado, who knows what they are going to be choosing. But quite a nice game. Uh, but the push on the left side, rather convincing as Rage Boy, together with Somos, that was a solid performance. And of course, quite solid power units, with the Mangurais being quickly upgraded, Imperial Camels to support them, and even the counter units with the Halberdiers and Siege Weapons from the Slav. Combined with the Camel Arches weren't exactly powerful enough against all of it. You can see that the Elite Camel Arches are having a problem. They have really weak defenses. You can see only 1 plus 2. Uh, so when you compare it with, for example, the Elite Mangurais, they are having plus 4 on the Pierce. So they survive quite a lot. And that basically just inevitably means that just the combination 4 
Germany was a lot more powerful and that's why the opponents couldn't exactly do too much against that. Okay, let's have a look into the post game. We are looking at Somos with quite a solid military score obviously with the archers, that's usually how it goes. 490 units killed. But when you can kill a lot of trash in the halberd years, that mounts up and comes up really quickly. Largest army for Gurke in the 90 Ratan archers, really? Wow. He was really having that many? No, he really was. He really kind of was. Look at that. It's not even selecting all of them. 49 here. There are some 45 or some such. 30 here, maybe. Oh, the 20. Hmm? Actually, makes sense. He's gonna be having like 70, 80 Ratan archers there. So, very well played on that front. So, I'll escape at 40. It's kind of solid numbered as well. You can see the same as Somos with 52. But just the power is a bit different between Mangurai and Kemal Archer. And then you can see they were sending at least a few resources after the 30 minutes in there to prompt a few players up. Like, for example, Sarah Escape needed a bit of assistance. But this was just kind of a good, how is it called? Good draft. It's surprising that we haven't seen, for example, Goths picked here. That might have been a bit of a good civilization. They didn't draft for it, but it's kind of like a good backup if you have a map like exactly this. And it's fairly popular to be actually playing on it. But in the end, seems like that the Germans picked correctly nonetheless. Yeah, it was a pretty good uh, feudal age in here at 4 minutes 23. As Randy earlier with the Cumans jumped there fairly quickly so that he could be taken advantage of the second feudal TC. You can see quite a high villager. Count for street speed noobs so that he's gonna be able to supply as many elephants there as possible. But even that wasn't going to be enough against the power play of the Germans, so GG.